guys, this is Mubeen. We were talking about the B cells. We were talking about the immunoglobulins and the class switching and the variable regions diversity. So I wanted to put that all together in one recap video and hopefully create a summary for you. Uh, of course, I cannot, I cannot cover all the contents I covered in the remaining lectures, but just for the bigger picture of the B cell and the immunoglobulin. So let's say here is a B cell and here is a nucleus. So first of all, the nucleus has gotten the, let's make the immunoglobulin here. An immunoglobulin has heavy chains and it has light chains. Then it has variable regions and it has constant regions. Variable region is the antigen binding site, antigen binding site and constant region is biological functions. We will actually do the functions and the other things later on. The constant region is of type IgE, IgM, IgD and so on based on what kind of heavy chain is engaged. There are five types of heavy chains. So let's very quickly recap it. The B cell, first of all, when it is creating, when it is being created, uh, if it cannot create IgM or IgD, the B cell will undergo apoptosis. And there are two, two areas where it can happen. Once, first of all, the B cell would try to make Ig heavy chain. If the heavy chain can be formed, it would live, otherwise it would die. Once it can make the heavy chain, then it would try to make the light chain. If it can make the light chain, it tries kappa light chain first. If it can make it, it would stay, it would live. Otherwise, it would try to make lambda. If it cannot make lambda, it would die. Otherwise, it would make lambda. That is why about 60% to 70% is the kappa chain and 30% is the lambda. So once the B cell has become productive that it can make immunoglobulins, now the question is what is it going to do? How would it create the diversity on the binding site? There are multiple, there are millions of antigen pathogens uh, or the antigen types and so the B cell should be able to connect with them. One B cell would produce one kind of immunoglobulin and that one kind of immunoglobulin can bind with one kind of antigen. When I say one kind, that is on the binding site, the idiotype. The otherwise one B cell can actually create IgM and IgD simultaneously, then it can create uh, IgG. IgM, uh, sorry, IgE and IgA. So now let's talk about how that happens. The variable region of the heavy chain, that is this part, is created by V, D and J gene pools. The light, variable region of the light chain is created by V and J gene pools. The DNA rearrangements that occur over there, those re re rearrangements um, occur in this way that we'll pick up one gene from the V, we pick up one gene from the D, one gene from the J. First D and J are connected. The enzyme that helps in this one is RAG1 and RAG2. These enzymes connect the genes together. Then what happens is that there is a, another enzyme endonuclease which is called Artemis that would come and that would cut the um, so, sorry, when the RAG1 and 2 work with the DNA, they would create a hairpin loop on the DNA and separate out the rest. The Artemis would come and that would um, nick the DNA and create two overhanging strands. Those strands are then repaired with TDT or elongated. That would create junctional diversity. That only happens on the variable region of the light chain, a heavy chain, VJ light chain does not have the D in it, so there is no junction diversity and there is no junction flexibility. There also is no P and N nucleotides on the variable region of the light chain for this reason. Finally, the uh, polymerases would come and they would join these and finalize the base pairs in the mutating parts and ligase would come and that, that would connect it. So that would be the way junctional diversity with DNA rearrangement occurs, is done. Then what happens is that the, the light chains, when they're formed, and, and then they will be heavy chain too. So let me just make heavy chain gene here as well. So me, C, mu, and C delta. These are the first heavy chain uh, molecule genes that are active and that are attached to this gene. 
So what would happen is that the immunoglobulin that would be formed is going to be IgM and IgD. So what would, how would that happen? Once the messenger RNA comes out into the cytoplasm, it is alternatively spliced. So some of the messenger RNA would be spliced so that C mu is left on them and so they would make IgM. Others will be spliced so that CD is left on them and they would make IgD. So DNA rearrangement for the variable region and the alternate splicing for the G or M. These both will be simultaneously shown. That would then cause this T, B cell to become functional and be able to attach with some T cell and antigen. That would cause a T cell to give the signal back IL-4, IL-5, then CD-40 combination and B7 combination with sometimes even IL-2. So these combinations and the uh, uh, signals would cause this uh, B cell to become further proliferated. It would become, it, it would make a differentiating as well. And in that process, then the somatic hypermutation would start occurring. And what that means is the, there are going to be single base pair changes which would appear here. And for these base pair changes, what we need is a follicular dendritic site, a cell in the lymph node that has to actually connect with this thing, present the antigens, and let the B cell exercise itself on those antigens and keep having hypermutations. So that is a very interesting story. Now one more thing which is important is that when the light chain and heavy chain come out in the cytoplasm, there are combinations of the light chain and heavy chain that occur. So that also is a combinatorial change which occurs and various B cell would combine with various light chain. The heavy chain and light chain would combine differently. So that is a som somatic hypermutation. And finally, the class switching. So the class switching mechanism, IL-4 towards IgE, IL-5 towards IgA, viruses towards IgG1, bacteria towards IgG3, helminths towards IgE, and so various kinds of um, uh, environmental factors, microenvironmental factors, or pathogens can make a B cell do a class switch to a different type of immunoglobulin. Once a class switch is done, a particular gene is removed and another gene is engaged. So for example, if you wanted to make IgG, we'll remove CM and CD, an aid enzyme takes part in that and starts it. And so now what would happen is that CM, C uh, gamma will be engaged and that will now start creating IgM, IgG, sorry. Now, uh, immunoglobulins can either be released in the uh, fluids or they can stay on the surface. The surface immunoglobulins can be IgM, IgD, or IgG. IgM and IgD are for the naive cells. IgG is for the cell that is a memory cell. Memory B cells have IgG on the surface. Now, in genetics mechanism, the reason for the for the immunoglobulin to be able to stay in. If we want the immunoglobulin to stay on the cell surface, then what we do is we create a poly A tail with the constant heavy chain region. That tail is hydrophilic. So hydrophilic molecules do not like to go out or they like to stay outside the water. So once that IgG goes to the surface, it just stays here or IgM or IgD. But if we want it to be released out into the bloodstream, then we'll not put the hydrophilic. Instead, we'll put a hydrophobic tail here. And what did I do? So this is the other way around. Hydrophilic will take it out because it loves water. And hydrophobic would make it, it hates water, and that would make it stick here. So that is a quick recap of the uh, genetics. So thank you very much, and we will continue with the immunoglobulin functions and types. Thanks.